Hey guys, Mumbles here with another New World video, and today we have a dev update on a couple things that are be coming, as well as a public test server, which uh, is going to give you kind of like an insight on these items and these new mechanics changes and all that kind of stuff. And this does seem like this is going to be a future thing, not just a temporarily one-time thing. This does seem like this is going to be a thing that they open and close as new patches get ready to come out, so that we can play test them and find out any bugs, try to break the game, that kind of stuff. Just like we do already just make it before the patch of the release so we can get as much bugs out of the way as possible so if you guys like this video don't forget to drop a like comment subscribe and hit the bell let's jump right in and see what this new dev blog has to say so here you can see we do have the new world official uh i guess news section here they do announce the public testing realm which is going to be a thing that goes on and off as patches get ready to roll out so with this coming out, I'm assuming you'll probably see this patch coming out in the next couple of weeks, maybe three at the absolute most, which means we're going to get some of these features or all of these features pretty soon. And these actually look really, really good. So pretty much the top here, they just basically talk um, that we're excited to announce this and that we want you guys to become a part of the testing experience so that you guys can figure out what you guys like, because they do want to listen to us and they do want to make the correct choices on the changes of the game. So the public test realm is going to be a limit availability. Um, however, anyone with the game already in Steam will go ahead and get a key, but the servers will go live November 10th at 12 p.m. PT, which would be right about a half, an hour ago. Um, so if you're able to get on, great. Some of these new features, test them out, see what these new things are gonna show up. We do see down below here, we do have the new weapon, which is the Void Gauntlet. Now this thing we don't know much about. Essentially, it looks like it's going to be a hybrid and more of a DPS support weapon. Um, it's gonna be the first weapon that scales off both intelligence and focus. So this will be a second focus weapon for the life staff to actually support. So we'll be kind of curious to see where this fits into the meta. You can see here either, I, I'm assuming this isn't a laser. I believe this looks like a kind of like a Void Sword of some sort. Kind of looks like the energy sword from Halo, not going to lie, but absolutely love it. They do want to base this me weapon off of being a great pair to these life staff so that the life staff has something else to go with it. As you guys know, strength, dexterity, intelligence all have more than one weapon. Focus life staff was the only one that didn't have a second weapon. So this weapon will be a second to that and be a good kind of option for an alternative weapon for the life staff it does show a little bit of the kind of stuff in the tree itself it says the annihilation tree focuses on maximizing damage at close range and revolves around the void blade which is what we can see i'm assuming right here in the picture this is going to be the void blade a summon blade of corrosive void energy it's be kind of interesting the decay tree offers ranged healing and debuffs and revolves around the orb of decay which i'm assuming will probably be a different kind of animation around the ring a dual phase projectile that can debuff enemies and heal allies with it with its arsenal and buffs and debuffs the void gauntlet to be a perfect group combat and can significantly bolster your allies at the expense of your enemies so it sounds like this orb of decay you can kind of shoot it and it'll heal and damage it'll heal your allies while dealing damage to any enemies in its way um we don't know how many people this can go through if that's going to be ability or passive I'm kind of curious to see what this is going to go. Uh, can you use both at the same time, both trees? Because obviously if you have the Void Blade and the Orb, they're two completely different animations. I'm assuming the Sword part is going to be the intelligence-based stuff and the Orb is going to be the focus-based. So I'll be kind of curious how this works with the Orb and the Sword and the differences if you can use both trees or if you have to use one with this kind of build. Next we have is new missions and mobs, enemy type, all that kind of stuff. So we are gonna see some new enemies. Um, it looks like a new dangers have arrived on the Southern shores. So the Varangian, Varangian Raiders have sailed down from the North and brutally carved out sections of each territory to claim their own. So this does seem to be a way that they're gonna cause higher level areas or lower level areas to have higher level enemies. I'm assuming this is probably going to be a mid to end game kind of level. They do have the first light in Monarch's Bluff areas to entire the fort. Uh, they've captured an Everfall as well. So face off against fierce Varangian hewers, whatever that is, scouts, knights, and archers. Level range to 16 20. So they are still a lower level. However, it's a new enemy. So we may start seeing these guys come up more and more. And this is kind of an interesting way to introduce them because obviously those places probably aren't getting as much combat and as much 
kind of love as they would want. So bringing in these new kind of enemies and such like that will allow players to go back to those areas and kind of bring up the economy again in those those zones. They do say there are going to be new enemy varieties. We're going to have a wet, uh, withered swarm mancer. Uh, we have a beetle, the lost shaman, and the pirate alligator. I'm kind of curious about the pirate alligator here. Is it a pirate that's an alligator? Is an alligator that's a pirate? I don't know. I'm curious. I'm very curious about that one. We also have the ancient guardian pyromancer. Uh, fire is my greatest weakness right now. Um, if I even look at looked at by a fire mage or a fire step, I'm dead. I, I just I can't do it. And a corrupted laborers. New enemy quests. It looks like we have some new uh, quests as far as uh, Everfall. Um, this will probably be dealing with the Ver Varangians. Uh, while their motives are kind of coming south, we do want to try to fight these guys off. We have new legendary weapon quests. Um, alongside the release of the Void Gauntlet, we're also releasing a new legendary weapon quest series. Upon reaching level 60, a maximum skill level with the Void Gauntlet feed legendary weapon for the Void Gauntlet. Uh, we also have improved main storyline quests. Um, these uh, new task types and quest variants, I don't know what that means for the main storyline. Um, including wave events, destructible objects, proximity nodes for tracking. You'll see some of these in the progress through the story and more improvements are still on the way. So I don't know if these are going to be a kind of another set of missions that maybe uh, you have like the main one line right now. Maybe it kind of branches off and kind of reconnects somewhere along the main storyline quests. That's the only thing I can think of because otherwise all of us who have completed the main storyline aren't going to be able to experience that we are going to be getting new pvp missions finally rather than just having the only three that will spawn in in the area um, i'm kind of excited to see a variety come starting to come in um, so we have control points these missions send you out to control capture control points at forts um, that's actually kind of cool because you do want to keep the fort so having a mission to go to the fort um, will be kind of interesting as well as very dangerous because if you die with the pvp missions you lose them so you're probably going to have some people sit on the point, heal, and then just as a blob, move off and heal. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this plays in. Intercept, defeat enemy faction members and collect their tiers. War camp loot, retrieve hidden plans at the enemy war camp. So that's going to be at the, if you're at the fort, there's that war camp outside where the attackers usually come from. That's going to be right there. So the new trading post experience, essentially all the trading posts are now going to be linked to one market. However, the taxes are going to be a little bit different. So the taxes are going to indicate are going to be indicated where you place or sell the item. So if someone places the sell in Everfall, Everfall gets the selling fee. Now, if you buy it in Brightwood, Brightwood gets the buying fee. They don't get both. It's just one. Wherever you buy it, you get the fee there. Wherever you sell it is you get the fee there. So you'll probably see some people starting to move around see where the trading fees are less and go there to buy stuff. So those lower areas that may have lower taxes are probably get a lot more people coming in to just buy stuff from the trading post. We'll have to see where that takes off with the economy as well, how that changes things, because there is going to be a larger number of things in the market as well as a little bit more buying as well. So we're going to see how the market fluctuates. It's probably going to fluctuate quite a bit. I'm probably going to wait about a week to hold off and sell anything just because I don't know what the price is going to be of anything. And it's probably going to be super getting, it's going to be just getting undercut nonstop at the start of this. Because again, there's going to be a lot more supply hitting the supply lines and the demand's not going to be as much right off the bat. So all in all, this looks really, really good. I'm kind of excited to see what this public test realm is. I'm also crazy excited for the Void Gauntlet since we saw it at GamesCon. And then also just trying to see what the new missions are for the main storyline. What that means for anyone who has completed the main storyline or if these are completely different main storyline quests that are just kind of like a branch off of the main storyline that is still part of the main kind of quest and the main story of the island and all the lore and all that kind of stuff super excited for all this guys but if you guys like this go ahead and drop a like comment subscribe and hit the bell i'll catch you guys on the next one have a great day guys goodbye